one. It is deep to right field, and that ball is going, going, it is gone. There is a strategy that you can use that will increase your students' learning by 60% for information they did not know. Who might want to know that strategy? Well, let's go there. Guess what? If you would like to know the one simple change you can make as you introduce a unit, that can, a unit at any age, by the way, that increases learning 30%. That sounds, neuroeducation brings those things together to suggest strategies for the world of education. They can answer really great questions. I would be curious, how many of you in here would be interested if you could figure out, using neuroscience, how to get a kid that's no and move him to go with one simple word? Who thinks that's not like, yeah? Is the percentage of time we have with students in their waking hours, kindergarten to 12th grade. That is a tiny sliver of time. It's actually less time than they spend with electronics the majority of their children. We want to double the effect of our time. We certainly can't double the time we have with them, but with strategies, we certainly can double the effectiveness of our teaching. That is why my goals for both these days have been to do two things. One, to show you the how and why the things we're doing in our classroom work from a brain strategy perspective, and for you to walk out the door with some new strategies that you can implement immediately. How many of you picked up a couple new things yesterday, at least? We are going to be focusing on a journal event where you're going to write strategies. The metacognitive, meta means self-cognitive, self-aware of what you just learned. So, what did we do? How did we do it? That would be a good spot for you to put in as your teacher because you're thinking how I could use this in a classroom. I, we did it in a way where there was no public shaming, right? And the monitoring, why did we do this? That goes back to the question of, oh, because it turns out if kids are checking their prior knowledge, they're priming their brains. How well did you understand the information? And do you have some more questions? And feel free at break if you have questions to come ask me. Remember I said one of my goals was to sh tell you how you learn and why you learn? I just primed your brain with the word plasticity. We will be coming back to it. Your brain now is like plasticity, hmm. When it hears it again, it's go, hmm, that's a little more important. I'm gonna keep thinking about that. When you do that with students, it works the same I way. I shared the story with a different slide that obviously is perfect for this moment. Um, I had a student, we'll call him KD, and he was the kid that came in with a storm and, and created a storm everywhere he went. And it did not take very long for me to decide, I need a plan with this kid. Usually I run a pretty, just we don't need necessarily charts and everything, but I'm like, I need a plan. And I was so just frazzled, I'm like, we're doing a marble jar. I got my marble <laughs> jar out. And I tell him, every time we're doing something good, you're doing something, I'm putting a marble in here. And it's gonna be good, you're gonna do good stuff, and there's gonna be some marbles in there, and when we're done, you and I will talk about what we're gonna do. Whole week goes by, and I'm looking for anything good. <laughs> Not a single marble is in there. I'm even more frustrated than I started the week with. And this marble thing is below me. Where did this come from? I need a new plan. And I'm like, he comes in that Monday. The minute he walks in, my body is just like this, like just so tense. And I know my face is like, bring it because. We have had, we've just gone around and around. And in that moment of just that, when he walked in and I just felt that surge, like a Pavlovian and surge in reverse, I thought, oh my God, it is not him who needs to change at all. It is absolutely me. I put out my marble jar. And every time I chose to interact with him in a positive way, I'll put my own marble in there. <laughs> My jar gets filled like a new pair of boots. <laughs> <laughs> it worked out pretty fabulous. And it was my stepping. And I needed to reward myself for proactively looking for.
forward to what am I, how am I going to interact with this kid? What am I going to say with this kid? And it totally changed the dynamic I had with that kid and that relationship. Your leaders could do the following. I would like if you could just have a very short discussion. What does that look like in a classroom? Maybe if you're going to teach about a topic as banal as weather. As weather. It happens. I look around the room and there's so much smiling and engagement and eye contact. And believe it or not, your brain was just dumping dopamine like you would not believe into your brain. Dopamine is very much a reward neurotransmitter, and we'll be talking about it a lot. It primes your brain for learning. You already are feeling like, I'm being rewarded socially here. This is feeling good. Imagine if you started your student's day somehow having that dopamine dump happening. How great would that be? Rich. How many of you maybe, I, I won't even ask for a show of hands, but just a nod. Did you think a little harder this time? Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Did you write it a little more clearly? Yes. Okay. Did you organize your thinking a little more clearly? Mm -hmm. Someone else was going to be seeing your work. Is peer evaluation a powerful motivator to put in your best effort? Mm -hmm. Yes, it certainly can be. I think what was key to what we just did was mm -hmm. that I felt um, like emotionally I was safe. Because I've been in classes where they've done that kind of thing, and then you were to raise your hand if you had true or false, and then, oh, you're wrong, you know, yeah. right after that. So I like the fact that you didn't, um, you know, have that as part of the lesson is raise your hand if you, you put true, right. and then, ah, I gotcha. You know what I mean? Yeah. That kind of thing. Absolutely. So emotionally, a child that was feeling like they didn't have success in their life would feel like they really didn't have success right. in life. And now it's been public. <laughs>